In the Sellerton Associates Technology Training Tip of the Month, we'll be looking at creating quick parts in Word. Okay, I have Microsoft Word up and running. I'm using version 2016 for this. What we're doing will work with any current version of Word though. So I'm going to be saving a quick part that I want to reuse in basically any important company document. The one I have open is our executive summary. It's about 16 pages long. And at the end of it here, I'll do control end to get to the end of the document we have a section called Document Revision Information, and we add this to all important company documents to track their revision status. So it consists of a horizontal line to separate this from the rest of the document, the title, Document Revision Information, and then a table containing our logo, a field reflecting the name of the document, Executive Summary is the name of it, a field that always shows the current date, it is September 16th, a hard typed in date where someone just types in the date they last revised it. So, you know, that doesn't update. I'd have to manually change it if I revise the document. The name of the author is also hand typed in. Maybe we consider the author whoever the last person who revised it is, or maybe it's an ongoing owner of the document. And then there's also a field reflecting the current full file name and path and it's stored on my desktop right now. So the nice thing about some of these fields is they'll update based on the document this table is inserted into. So this is really a nice thing for any document if our practice is going to be to include this revision information in all important company documents, this would be a great thing to save as a quick part. And a quick part is any customized content. It could be simply a logo, but it could also be like what I've got here, combinations of logo, text, tables, including formatting. It really can be anything. That's what makes it pretty neat. Now, you'll also hear quick parts referred to as building blocks. And basically, a quick part is a type of building block. There are others built in. And you may even have used some of these. If I go up to the Insert tab, there are cover pages. These are built in cover pages and technically they're building blocks. So I could insert a nice looking cover page. It includes formatting and I can make changes as I need to, but it's, it's a pre-made piece of content to save me work. Same thing if I come over to headers, there's a list of different headers and, and also matching footers in the footer list that include pre-made and pre-arranged headers and footers, some with formatting, saving me the work of having to do it. And I can create my own custom headers and footers and save them to this gallery. And all of these are building blocks. Quick Parts are also a building block in the Quick Parts gallery, which is right here. Now I'm clicking this Quick Parts button and you see that I can pull in some auto text that would actually be carried forward from much older versions of Word. Auto text was the way this was done in previous versions. Uh, document properties, fields, but I don't have any custom quick parts here yet because I don't see them on the menu. The first step is to create or find a document that already has the thing you want to save as a quick part. So the horizontal line on down through the document revision table is what I want to save and it does already exist. It's set up. It's exactly the way I want it to be. So I'm going to select it on the Insert tab. I'm going to go over to Quick Parts and click Save Selection to Quick Parts Gallery. Now, it brings up this Create New Building Block dialog. So there you see the terminology kind of switching on you. But again, Quick Parts are building blocks. They're one of the many types of building blocks. So I'm going to name it. That's, that's the main thing you want to do here is give it a name. I'm going to type in Doc Rev Info. All right. Now, I would advise putting your custom quick parts if they're not actually, say, a cover page or header or footer in the quick parts gallery, because then they'll appear directly when you click this button. If you click the drop down arrow, you'll see all the other types of quick parts. And yeah, if this is a cover page, I'd put it in the cover page gallery. Then it would actually display with the cover pages. But I'm going to leave it in quick parts because it doesn't fall under any of those other categories. Now, I'm kind of using the word category differently than this category. You can actually create your own category. So I could literally have, say, seven quick parts. They'd be listed here. But if I create different categories for them, they'll be listed under the headings for those categories. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it be general, and you'll see that when I go ahead and, and save it to the quick parts list. You can describe it if you want to. I could just say insert at the end of all important company documents. All right. I am definitely going to save it in the building blocks template. That's what makes it globally available. And with the options, insert content only. That means that wherever the cursor is, this would insert there. 
and it wouldn't break to a new page or anything like that. If you look at the drop down, notice I can insert it in its own paragraph. And you know, that might actually be what I want, though technically these are all their own paragraphs anyway. And I could do it on its own page. That would certainly be appropriate for a cover page, but anything that should break onto its own page, you could have it automatically do that. I'm just gonna go with the first one, insert content only. And I'll click okay. Okay, so now the quick part is saved. I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the top of this document, but look, if I click quick parts, there it is. It even graphically displays and here's the general category. Again, you could have multiple categories actually listed on this menu. Imagine I had many more quick parts. They could all be under their own categories. Here's the name of it. And all I have to do to insert it is click it. Now I'm not gonna do that here, but what I will do is open a different document. So let me go and go to the file tab. I'll click open, I'm gonna browse out. And on my desktop, I have another document, a project status report which is kind of a fill in the blanks template, but we consider this another important company document and it could end up being much longer than this, you know, as people actually fill this in. So I am going to go ahead and just hit enter and I am going to insert the quick part. Now I know it's, it's probably going to end up on another page. So you know what, I'm just going to control enter to do a page break right away here for this particular document that seems more valid to me, but I'm going to come up to insert. I'm going to click quick parts. Click on the quick part, and there it is. And check out what it did, project status report, because that's the name of the file, and this field reflects it. Again, today is the 16th, but now, it, since I'm revising this on the 16th, you know, I could go ahead and put in the one there to make the revision date the 16th, and, you know, if I'm actually taking this over instead of Steve, I could go ahead and type my own name in there. And then here's the file name and path, which will update automatically as I change it but exactly as I saved it, it inserts in. And now I can do that to any new or existing document. You know, just to show you, if I go to File, New, and even pull up a blank document, I can go up to Insert, Quick Parts, and drop it in there. Now it says Document 1, and it hasn't been saved yet, so the file name and path is not known. But as soon as I do save it and refresh this information or open it again, it'll be filled in. But that's the neat thing is that it's now available for every document I might create, and that is a quick part, big time saver for standardized content that you're going to use over and over again. Now, one thing I should add here is that when you do close out of Word entirely, if you have saved quick parts or made any other changes to building blocks, you'll be prompted if you want to save those changes. Let me just show you that. I'm going to close up Word. Now, this is for this new document. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to close the project status report. I will save that. And I'm going to close the executive summary. And there it is. So pay attention. Notice it says I've modified styles, building blocks, such as cover pages, etc. Do I want to save the changes to building blocks? And yeah, if you like the quick part you saved, be sure you say yes to that or save because otherwise it will be lost. You won't have your quick part next time you come back. Thanks for watching. To learn more about our classes, please visit us at www.ellerttraining.com.